Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel and this is your tip of the week. A viewer recently asked me about the ruffles suggestions that I gave people. Well, she wanted to know, well, how do I put it into a seam? So I thought that was a great suggestion for showing you how to do a variety of ways of putting trims into a seam. So the first one I'm gonna show you is how to put piping into pillows. And in fact, most of these uh, little suggestions are for pillows. So here are the two fabrics I would be using for a pillow. I have the pretty sides of this fabric up because you want to put the piping when you're stitching it down on the pretty sides. Now piping, there's the cording on this edge right here and then the piece of fabric that's folded over, that raw edge is over against the raw edge of your fabric. Before I stitch the other side of the fabric down on top, I first like to do a basting stitch all the way around because it holds the piping in place and it's going to be a lot easier. Then I'll place the other side of the pillow fabric. I'm going to place it down so you have pretty sides together. Take your zipper foot is what you're going to use to stitch this down and place it on there and before you begin stitching move your needle all the way over towards the cording. You want it as close as you can get. Then stitch all the way around. Now there's a special little uh, trick that I do to get the uh, piping to go around the corner. So if you want more detailed information about piping, there will be a link listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. I don't put a uh, pom-pom fringe or tassel fringe down very often on a pillow, but every now and then I like to do it. And so this is a pillow done with pom-pom fringe. The technique that I use for putting it on, I do it the same way for the tassel fringe. So this method that I'm using for the pom-pom fringe or tassel fringe is very, very similar to the piping. I put it down on the pretty side of the fabric first and the little band that holds the pom-poms is on that edge right there. And again on this one I highly recommend you do a basting stitch to hold it down. Now the technique I use for going around a corner is really simple. When I get to the corner and I've got the pom-pom fringe going around the corner, I take a pair of scissors and go in on this band and just clip it at a diagonal so that this will bend around the corner easier. Then I place the other fabric on top using my zipper foot and stitching close to the pom-poms all the way around. Now here's a ruffle and there's multiple ways of doing a ruffle and I do have a link on how to do three different types of ruffles and that link is also in the description section. So you select a type of ruffle that you want to do and then you're going to do it just like you did the other way. You're going to put it on the pretty sides of your fabric. So your ruffle is already gathered up, you pin it down, and I like to do a basting stitch to hold it in place. Then I'll take my other piece of fabric and place it on top and then do a regular stitch and stitch it down. Now when you put the ruffle going around a corner, I highly recommend that when you put it in there, you really gather it up. Put extra gathers in that corner because if you don't have it really gathered up in the corner, your corners will curl and roll in. I'm going to show you an example of that. Now this pillow has a corner. I should have redone it, but I didn't. That I didn't put enough gathers in the corner. So you can see it curling or it'll curl up and go in this way. Now this corner here is a little better 
and all and here. So you, if you want to really make it so that the ruffles do not roll in, take that extra time and put more gathers in it. Now most of the time when you think of putting rickrack on, you think of doing it like this. Well here is how you can put it into a seam. And here is an example. It's real easy, it's not any harder to do. So again, your rickrack is placed on the pretty side of your fabrics. Then stitch it down, and I like to stitch it down right there in the middle, kind of more close to the outer edge of the fabric. Stitch it down there first. Always do that because it's going to make it so much easier to finish it off. Then put your fabric, other fabric, on top. Remember, pretty sides together. So when you, once you've stitched it on here, you've got a stitch line on the back. So what I do is then I turn it over and stitch right over this same stitch line. And then when you're done, let me open this up, you have this. So you can do it in again on a towel like this. And let me show you one more. This is a towel apron. And I made large circles for the uh, pockets. Then I folded one edge over. And you can make some very, very decorative pockets by using this technique. Now here are two different sizes of little kind of like ruffle trims. These don't have gathering stitches on it, but they have little tucks already built into the ruffle. So it makes it easier going around a curved edge like this. So let me show you how to do that. So here's the narrower ruffle here, but it's not really, I don't want to call it a ruffle, but it's just a trim that's really pretty. So here are the little tucks, and it's already stitched in there like it. And this has about a half inch seam. So there's a um, stitch line right here where they did the stitching on the, to hold the tucks down. But on this, I first did a basting stitch to hold it all on. It just makes it so much easier. And then again, it's, remember, it's always on pretty side of your fabric. And then you would bring the other piece of fabric over. And then you would do a half inch wide seam because you don't want their stitch line to show. Now, if you wanted to use this as a ruffle, you could do a large basting stitch on just the ruffle and gather it up like you would on regular fabric. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and that it's been helpful to you because I know when you're first learning how to sew, you kind of do a lot of head scratching as you're trying to figure it out. So you can see all of these trims that I've showed you are pretty much put in the same way. There's just very subtle differences on the technique used. Now, if you're interested in other tips of the week, there will be a link down below your YouTube screen. They're very informative. It's like taking a college course. You will learn so much. Now, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.